Everyone always talks about making passive income, sitting on a beach and collecting your dividend payouts, but how do you do it? With analyst estimates not projecting a fun 2023, how are you supposed to earn a bankroll off a bunch of red stocks? The team here at CJ Capital Management have been hard at work researching financially sound companies that have long histories of increasing dividend payments. We believe these large cap companies in specific recession-proof industries can produce consistent results even with macro inflationary headwinds. We've narrowed down our list to our top five long-term dividend paying stocks. This video should not be interpreted as financial advice. Please do your own research before investing in securities of any type. Lind is an industrial gas and engineering company out of the United Kingdom but operates globally. They offer atmospheric gases like oxygen, nitrogen, argon, and other process gases like carbon dioxide, helium, and hydrogen. The end users of Lind's products are from a multitude of industries like healthcare, energy, manufacturing, food and beverage, fiber optics, steel making, aerospace, chemicals, and water treatment. Most of those are consumer staple industries that will be operating whether or not the world is in a recession. Lynn's products are a necessity for many large corporations to operate, and with 30 consecutive years of increasing annual dividends, you can tell they strive for growth. According to the investment fund Clearbridge Investments, the only sector that contributed positively to the company's performance among the 11 industries they were invested in was their material sector, by Lind. In their Q3 investor letter this year, they talked about how Lind has historically held on to the pricing gains following increases in energy costs. This should hopefully protect their profitability during inflationary phases and potentially lead to an expansive margin. Lind's future seems secure and most analysts seem to agree. Their 1.37 dividend yield makes it so you're making money on top of their above average stock price growth. Chevron is an integrated energy and chemicals holding company that operates worldwide. They have two main segments, upstream and downstream. The upstream segment is the exploration, development, production, and transportation of crude oil and natural gas, while the downstream segment is more of the refining and marketing of the oil and includes the manufacturing of renewable fuels. Chevron is at the top of the game among the global energy leaders, and many great investors seem to agree. The key factor that sets Chevron apart is the integrated aspect of their business. They own all the assets that go into the crude oil they produce and market. They generate their largest margins from their upstream drilling, but they also control the midstream transportation and the downstream plants and refineries. Not to mention they're putting up Michael Jordan numbers on their balance sheet. And flexing a 17% debt equity ratio, they can do just about any strategic move or take on any project of their choice. The cherry on the cake is their impressive 35 years of increasing annual dividend payments. Everyone needs oil, and Chevron's got you on every step of the way. I don't think there's a single person on the planet that doesn't know this company. They've been increasing their dividends for 60 years and probably will for another 60 because they're not going anywhere. Coca-Cola's dividends history goes all the way back to 1920. And since January 1st of 2010, they paid a total of $69.2 billion in dividends. Their 12-month trailing revenue is about $42 billion, and their profitability is nutty, converting 29% of sales to free cash flow, which is why their dividends have been rock solid for over half a century. With a 2.9% dividend yield and a payout ratio of 57%, you can expect this type of consistency for a fat minute. I make fun of Buffett fanboys all the time, but I still fall victim, and Coke has been one of his longest and largest investments ever. Their moat is insurmountable, and I don't see them going downhill unless some crazy drastic macro event happens. Nucor is a North Carolina-based steel producer, which proves a solid industry in poor economic times. Their past 12-month performance was crazy, with shares going up 29% compared to the 15% decline of the S&P 500 index. Last month in October, they were up double the index at 18%. New course 2023 is definitely not going to be as solid as this year, but their return on invested capital is over double its five-year average. So eventually, they're going to have to settle back down, but I'm holding long-term because that's what the estimates support. Steel companies all over the globe have been trying to be the first to produce clean steel products to help large customers meet carbon reduction goals. Nucor's new line, Econic, is the first broad-scale net-zero emissions carbon steel introduced to offer steel consumers emissions-free steel products to help meet their sustainability responsibilities. This means that any GHG emissions they're releasing into the atmosphere, they're removing an equal amount, revolutionizing the industry with a new sustainability bar being set. Nucor is the future of a greener U.S. steel landscape, and I'm all in. 
The last company I want to talk about has a 50-year streak of increasing dividends, which is the second highest on this list. Abbott Laboratories manufactures a wide variety of healthcare goods, including generic drugs, medical devices, nutrition, and diagnostic products, with Similac being one of the most famous products in their portfolio. Abbott Labs has maintained consistency for decades, and the way they're growing now, there's no signs of stopping. They've grown their EPS by 34% over the past three years, and they boast an impressive revenue growth of 6.4% this year, totaling over $45 billion. Their 10-year total shareholder return is sitting at around 540%. Although this has to be one of the riskiest on the list, they do have 98 consecutive years of dividends paid, but the estimates of their next year is pretty hit or miss, depending on the analyst you ask. I believe the pharmaceutical and innovative healthcare pipeline they have created will support them for decades to come. And if you were looking for consistent dividend income, you want boring companies that slowly grow over decades. These guys outlast recessions thanks to their debt and product structures and strong balance sheet. If you want a nice dividend revenue stream, you should be picking companies that are going to last the test of time and not just pay the highest share. Because if they're paying shareholders all their money, they won't be allocating enough capital to maintain their competitive advantage in the long run. Remember that growth is generally one of the most important factors with dividends. There's my list. Let me know what you think. Thanks for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, let me know. I'll see you around.